Sometimes in Excel, you have a goal that you want to work towards. So here, for example, I have gross profits, and then I deduct some overhead fixed costs and some salary costs, and I get to my net profit or loss. Now, I want to know, given that each person gets paid 10,000 for this job, how many people do I need to hire to break even? So I can, for example, change this, and that will change the number, but I want to know what the minimum number is. Now, you can do it manually, or you can use Excel's tools. Excel has two tools for these kind of work backward solutions on the data tab. One of them is called GoalSeek, and one of them is called Solver. And we're going to cover both of those in this video. The first one allows you to do one cell. The second one allows you to do multiple different cells with lots of constraints that you can add. And you can go towards a maximum or a minimum, as well as just a fixed number. So my name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on my channel about Google Sheets, Excel, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering them on my channel, and I like to release weekly videos on this kind of content. So let's get started. So here, what I can do is I can click on this cell, and I can go to the data tab, and I can choose what if analysis, goal seek, and I can say change this to a value of zero by changing cell, and I can click here and click that one and press OK. And then it says target value zero, current value zero. So I found the solution, press OK. And then over here, I can see what it's done. So that's really great. And I can do other examples here. So here I want to get, well, how many forks do I need to order to get to $600,000 in revenue, knowing that I have units ordered, sales price, revenue for each one is multiplying them, and then the total is just adding together all of the revenue cells. So I mean, I can start somewhere else, and I can go to Goal Seek, and I can choose Start Cell to be this one, and then I can say a value, which is going to be 600,000, and I'm going to change Cell this one. Press OK, and then it takes a little bit longer, but now it gets to 600,000, and I can press OK like that as well. So let's do it with this one. So I wanted to aim for a gross profit margin of 30% by changing the purchase price. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to what if analysis called seek, and I'm going to set this cell to 0.3 by changing cell this one. I can press OK. It does take a bit longer. I can pause if I want to and then continue, or I can click on step and then do it one at a time. And now it's found it. Press OK. And then I get to 30% for this price. Now that's all very well and nice, and you can change the price, but something that's a bit harder to change is the number of employees. If I look at the formula bar for this, or I double click, this is actually 4.6, and you can't have 4.6 employees, I just kind of changed the number format. So that is where Goal Seek comes into limitation. And of course it's changed, so actually I could play around with it, and seven will get me a negative number, so six is the minimum one that I need. So you can help it to get you close to where you need to, but not exactly where you need to. And that is, for example, one of the reasons why you might want to use Solver, which is the next step. So let's take the same data and look at Solver. Solver is also on the data tab over here. If you don't see it, it's not there by default, you have to activate that, and I'll show you later in this video how to do that. So let's say that I want to break even here. So I can click on this cell, and I can go to Solver, and I can say that I want to set this cell to a value of zero, and I want to change variable cells. So I can click on this one, and then press a comma, click on this one, press a comma, click on that one. Now I'm changing all of these three cells, and I can press Solve. So I found a solution by putting all of these things, one employee, there we go, and that's okay, I can press okay. Now let's say that I have a minimum of three people in my company who are just permanently employed, so I can't have one. So you can add those constraints as well. If you go back to Solver, I can say I want to add a constraint. I'm going to say that this is greater than or equal to, I'm going to write three. You can click a cell if you want to. In this case, we're not going to do that. Press OK. You just want to add one constraint. Then press Solve. So now it's found that with three, and it's changed these two respectively. Now I'm going to actually get another constraint, because it doesn't make sense for me to get this many knives, this many forks, etc. I need it to be ballpark similar based on these values. So I'm going to click on Return to solve a Parameters Dialog. Press OK. And then I'm going to add a solution that says this is, again, greater than or equal to, and let's say, 10,000. So now, effectively, the one that's probably going to change is this one, because it has the fewest, has no constraints, when I press Solve. So this is the minimum, this is the minimum, and then this is the one that did change. So I'm going to press um, OK. Note that you have, if I do that, then it puts in the solutions I want. Or I can restore original values. I can also get some outline reports, and I can save a scenario. So let's get the outline reports, see what they look like. So that is these three. So it's kind of saying, well, what these things are, saying what the objective cell is and what the constraints are. So you get kind of a full report explaining very, very in depth what you're saying, how long it took to solve it, how many iterations it did. Not very, very complicated there. And then this sensitivity report, this is not really showing us anything in particular. And this one is not really relevant to this kind of simple scenario. So if I click on this, though, you will see that, unfortunately, it is showing me not a fixed number of employees. So you can, if you want to do that with Solver, so I can, for example, also add a constraint that says that employees is an integer. And I can press add. And then I can also say that this one is an integer. And I can press OK. So I have these four constraints. And let's press solve. So it did find a solution. There we go. And I guess the one that it's changed is, if I press OK, is this one. This one can be different because it is a certain sales price. This one is an integer. And this one is like that. It's good. So uh, these are the additional things that Solver helps you do. It doesn't always find a solution. 
um, and we'll see scenarios in which it doesn't find a solution. So let's go towards a more sophisticated case, even though this is called simple. <laughs> but we are going to go more advanced than this as well. So here in this scenario, we have different types of items, and we have quantities that we can order, but we have a maximum for each one. So the factory can only produce a maximum of 38,000 glasses, 46,000 bowls, etc. And we also have a max overall. So we can't, in our entire factory, produce more than 120,000 units. And we actually, we want to get the maximum profit. We don't care about breaking even, we just want to get the maximum profit. So here I could, for example, say 38,000, and I could, for example, say 46,000 here. Um, in this case, it's actually kind of easy to do this ourselves because we just get the remaining one to get to zero, or as close to zero as possible. And then we look at the ones with the highest profit per item. So here it's going to be 50,000. And we've gone over there by 12,000, 14,000, sorry. So here I'm going to say 36,000. And then we get, this is going to be our maximum. But we're going to get Solver to do that for us. So on the data tab, I'm going to choose Solver. So I'm going to set the objective cell, which is this one, to be a maximum value by changing cells, these orange cells. So let's press Solve immediately. Without constraints, it says they do not converge because there is no maximum. So this is not very, very useful. This is what you get when it doesn't work. So I'm going to return to the Solver dialog box by clicking that. And I'm going to actually add some constraints that say that this is less than or equal to this one. I'm going to add another one and say that the maximum is less than or equal to the max overall. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press Solve again. So there we go. Now it's found the solution. And it's essentially found this number of glasses, bowls. And we did have a different way of doing it. We just put 50,000 here, whereas here it put you know, random numbers there. I don't know why it assigned them, because these two are exactly the same, 1.4. So I'm going to not return to dialog and press OK. Yeah. So these two are the same. It just found that this same solution could be achieved if we just had as we had before, 34,000 and zero. This same solution could be achieved if we just had 36,000 here and zero. So Solver sometimes will find, if there's multiple scenarios, like it will just kind of choose one. So let's go back to the Solver dialog box and let's explore these things in more detail. So we can also say, for example, we wanted to add a new one where we say that these are all integers. Press OK. It does get confusing when you click Add and OK. Essentially, you click Add if you want to add another one on top of the one that you see here. OK if you want to add just the one you see. And Cancel if you want to get rid of all of the ones that you've just added in this. So uh, you can delete them as well. You can reset them. Re this will reset the entire screen, including the changing cells as well. Load and save is if you have a certain scenario that you want to be able to come back to. That's useful there. Uh, this one is we're going to tick in this case because we don't want the ability to have a negative number of quantity ordered. So often we do keep that ticked. These ones are about the solving method. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. So I'm going to click Solve to find a solution, which is the one that we had put in, so it doesn't do anything there. We can get our reports, these are the outline reports, and we can save the scenario, and then we can load it back later on using the load one. So let's go to another scenario. In this one, we can either turn a line on or off. So if I turn it off, it produces zero. If I turn it on, it produces the maximum number. But where there is an additional issue is that the more lines you have running, the more cost. Each line that runs has a cost of 40,000. So if, for example, I have zero for these ones, I'm only running two lines, therefore I have a cost per line only of 80,000. Whereas if I, if I run more lines, then I have more cost. So in the scenario that we had before, we were running three lines, and this one was, was there. Well, we can do it in this case because we've gone over the limit, but it is harder to do with three lines than if we ran, say, two lines. So if we go to the last one, the last one can produce the most number. So it might make sense to run those. So let's use Solver and see what that gives. So I'm going to click on Solver, and I'm going to say, uh, get the maximum again of this cell by changing the cells. Again, these orange cells. And I'm going to say subject to the constraints. And here I can say, well, same as before, this one is less than or equal to this one. And I'm going to add, and I'm going to say a new type of constraint, which is that all of these need to be binary. They need to be either on or off, ones or zeros. I'm going to press OK. And now I can press Solve. So it does take a little bit longer. If I load the answer report, we'll see that. I'm going to load the outline report. And then I'm going to press OK. And it's actually found that these two are the ones that get to a profit of 74,000. Now, if I ran this one, and these two are zero, then I get only 37,000. And then I could also run this one, that's 67,000, but that is less than this one, which is 74,000. So they are pretty close, but this one is the best one. So I can see here, the engine took a little bit longer. I had eight iterations and 20 sub problems. I don't perfectly know what these things mean, but it is using tech to kind of find a solution. So they are binary, and that's why it produces those things. So this is another uh, solver scenario that you can get to, but sometimes I won't be able to solve something. So this is um, the Original iteration of what I just showed you, but it didn't work. Here I'm trying to figure out, well, what is the cost per line? And I'm doing that by having a count if where it's greater than zero. And I can say here that it can give me these maximum constraints, but it can be anywhere from zero to that number, a bit like we had in the Solver Simple sheet. But let's see what it gives. So if I go to Solver and I have changing cells there, I'm going to have the constraints. This one is less than that. These ones are all less than or equal to this maximum. And also this, these must be integers. So I'm going to press Solve. 
And now it has changed this to 46,000, so it has got what it claims to be a solution, but actually it's not a solution that works because I could easily get to a higher profit than this, as we saw earlier. For example, if I say here 70,000, then that is immediately a higher solution than what we showed before. So it doesn't work with certain formulas, such as countifs or even if statements, uh, because for this one, for example, this one fails. This is where I have each, each line takes a certain number of staff to run it, so it is more advanced. And I'm going to say that, yeah, I'm, I'm adding in the, the extra constraints to say that I have a maximum number of nine staff, and each one has a certain number that has to go into it. So it is more constrained, and if I press solve here, it will give me this. It couldn't find something solved without integer constants. I could try that, but it also can find a solution. So pressing OK won't really get me anywhere. Now, if you don't see solver up here, then you need to install the add-in. If you go to file, and then options, and then add-ins, and then Excel add-ins, go, then you need to tick this one solver add-in. These are in here by default. You don't have to install anything else. Um, I like the analysis tool pack as well. That is uh, one that I have more videos on. So yeah, this is how you can get solver, pressing OK. By the way, if you want to get a copy of this file to follow along, then leave me a message in the comments and I can get it to you. So in terms of the different solver method types, you have GRG nonlinear is the most common one. That's generalized or reduced gradient. And that means that the chart looks something like this, which means there is a high point that is only one high point. So if you like, if you search for here, it will go up until it finds this solution. If you search here, it will as well. I know that you don't necessarily see your problem as this, but this is the mass behind how the tech tries to solve your problem. Now, if you go for LP simplex, that is a linear solution that kind of looks like this. So here, the more it goes up, the more it will be able to find the solution. So there is essentially one solution and usually one variable as well. Now, the third type of scenario is when you have multiple solutions, but maybe one is the highest, like this one. So here you need evolutionary to solve it. And what evolutionary does is it looks through all of the local peaks until it finds the global peak from all of them. Whereas if you had this kind of model, but instead you chose to use a GRG nonlinear, it might not find the highest of the highest. If your starting point is somewhere like that, it might look up, it might look up, it'll find this one, but it won't find this highest of the highest one. That's why you need evolutionary in certain instances, but the evolutionary process takes a lot longer um, than the other one does. You also have the option to choose GRG nonlinear, which is optimized with this. But you can choose GRG nonlinear on a multi-start scenario, which is more complicated. I'll show you how to do that in a second, but essentially uh, it can do evolutionary style stuff without going through the evolutionary method. Now, uh, solve it, some, these are some of the things that you get sometimes. It cannot improve on the current solutions. All the constraints are satisfied. This is what I got by using evolutionary when I'd already used another one. Or this one, all variables must have both upper and lower bounds. All evolutionary engine and multi-start options require this. So it won't work otherwise. So um, let's look at some instances of how it could work. So if you go to solver, you can go to options and get further customization. And here in nonlinear, you can use multi-start, but these options get a lot more sophisticated. And I won't go through them in detail, but you can do more customization there if you like. So if you like this video, then my name is David Benayman. I have tons of videos on my channel about Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Excel. If you're using Tech of the Office, I'm coming on my channel. So subscribe if you like more videos like this. Thanks for watching.